take a look at how UTC plans on stopping campus hunger. UTC's parking authority is at it again. And then what a better way to end a Thursday than dunking the Dean. I'm Olivia Brown. And I'm Kate Burkhalter. Your news starts now. A new proposal for parking will radically change parking for UTC. The proposal will change parking by dividing parking lots into commuter and residential, as well as reserved and event. Residential students can purchase a non-commuter permit, which will allow students who live on campus to park in any of the designated parking lots. Reserved permits will only be sold to faculty and staff. If you want to comment on the new parking proposal, check your email and follow the links. Authorities investigate the report of rape on our campus. UTC police along with Chattanooga Police Department have began a joint investigation on the reported rape. Authorities say the suspect is not a UTC student, but the victim is. If you have any information on this or any other incident, please let the UTC police know at 423-425-4357. Got food? UTC has you covered. Scrappy's Cupboard is a food pantry dedicated to giving food to students in need. Emila Howland has a story. Food pantry here on, at UTC and at colleges and universities across the country is to make sure their students are taken care of, um, especially those students that are in need. Along with the faculty, students can also get involved with the cupboard. Lauren Heron, Senior Associate Athletic Director slash Senior Woman Administrator, discuss about how the athletes helped by contributing spare shampoo, soaps, and toiletries to Scrappy's Cupboard. She encourages for all students to help contribute to the cause. You can find out more about the cupboard by going to utc.org or by visiting room 310 at the UC. A major roadway through our campus is closed until further notice. The section of Vine Street between the Lawson Center and Houston Street has been closed to through traffic and pedestrians. The closure is due to the new West Campus housing project. All Mox Express shuttles will still run, but now have an alternate route. For the updated routes, visit utc.edu. Hispanic Heritage Month started with Nacho Average Party. Our Carlton Smith has the scoop. Hispanic Heritage Month is about recognizing the contributions of Hispanic and Latino Americans as well as learning about their heritage and culture. The Hispanic Outreach Leadership Association, also known as OLA, hosted the kickoff celebration on Tuesday night. The event had Latin American foods, face painting, pinata smashing, and a tropical swing band. The goal was to get students interested in Hispanic Heritage Month and to share the culture. Okay, so we wanted students to experience a little um, like the culture through the music and the food and also to make them aware that Hispanic Heritage Month is some, a thing that happens every month and just to make them be more interested in our culture and in the language. Ola also has plans to host five other events during the celebration month. Look, and we're having more events for this month. We're having the Latino versus Hispanic um, talk, and they're going to talk about the difference between those terms. And then we're having a movie night. We're showing Black and Latin America with the first episode, which is about the Dominican Republic and Haiti. And we're having an attorney answer some questions about immigration after that. And we're also having the Latin dance exhibition, which will be a lot of fun. We're having professional dancers come and they're doing different dances, salsa, bachata, mambo, cha-cha, and it's going to be awesome. So, and then after that, we're having the bachata edition of Learn a Latin Dance, so students can come and learn the Latin dance themselves. So, come out and have fun with us. We're going to have free food at all our events. UTC's theater department is starting their season off with a production of The Arsonist. The show will run from September 26th through the 30th. Here's what to expect. You know, we were going through a bunch of plays and 
uh, and I was sort of uh, asked to really look at the the, the first show, which is. Uh, Oddly enough, one of those shows that we have this kind of a really small build period for. Um, so I picked this show and I was attracted uh, to this show, uh, kind of, uh, I guess, by the, the size of the set, uh, the size of the show, the size of the cast. I thought it was something that we could work in. I also think stylistically, uh, that was one of the big things that drew me to this show, was, this, was the, the entire sort of dark comedy, the absurdist qualities that the show uh, brings. It's a little bit different from, I feel, uh, a lot of the stuff we've done, and I think it kind of fills that, that gap academically. With the arsonists in particular, there's some ideas, and that's what happens when we allow bad ideas into our world. What are the consequences? What are the potentially destructive, disastrous consequences of these bad ideas that we embrace for whatever reason? I hope that our students have the opportunity, like I said, to uh, really to explore uh, different styles. With it being a dark comedy, with it being absurdism, I think uh, a lot of these characters, uh, I think our actors can make distinct choices uh, to really make these characters more interesting. I, I want them to come away with a true sense of playing with style. Physical style, we're going to do a lot of physical humor, uh, we're going to do some synchronized movement with the firemen. Most of them probably have never done uh, either epic theater or absurdism, which are kind of the, the fathers of this uh, from a stylistic point of view. So we, we, we want them to become, become very sophisticated in uh, their uh, uh, skills and talents. Hopefully one of the things that we do in the theater is create conversation. So I hope uh, you know our students get to have some conversations about uh, some of the things discussed in this play. I hope the university as a whole gets to discuss uh, some of the ideas that we are presenting in this play. What do we see in our society? What do we see around us? And how can this play help us to ask that question instead of just arguing with someone else? Ask the question that we need to be asking ourselves. And then have a little fun. So how does the creation of quesadillas result in the cancellation of a class? An HHP class experimented with camp stoves outside of Metro Annex. The assignment was to cook on the stoves to create quesadillas. The wood smoke from one of the stoves got sucked into an adjacent building where an instructor decided to cancel class as a safety precaution. Well, we were testing out our stoves. We had five or six different types of stoves um, that, that these guys could purchase or use on, on outdoor trips with other students. So we were just testing them out out here, baking quesadillas so they could burn their first meal outside Metro instead of burning it in the back country when they need to. Professor Bailey says this is the first time this happened with the class. You can see how a couple works together to create art. They call themselves Sonnenheimer, or Sun Garden. Together they create art and they're bringing their creative process to the UTC campus. Sonnenheimer will present their work next week at a Tuesday evening lecture in Benwood Auditorium. You can see their work afterwards in the Crest Gallery. The Dean of College of Business got a little wet with a welcome back celebration from UTC students. Funnel cakes, caramel apples, chicken fingers, and more. UTC College of Business hosted its fifth annual Down with the Dean, where students, faculty, and staff tested their throwing arms as they attempted to dunk the Dean. Students had the opportunity to mingle with the College of Business faculty and staff and chat with student organizations. So the winner for our prize pack for following Dean Robert Dooley's new Twitter and Instagram accounts, Sigma Alpha Iota at UTC. So whoever signed Congratulations to the winners. Thursday looked like great weather for the Dean to take a dunk, but how will this coming week look? Our Allie Bergen is here with your weekly weather updates. Thanks ladies. After a great week of sun and heat, Saturday through Monday we'll still have temperatures in the high 80s, but the sun will be replaced with clouds. But don't worry, because starting Tuesday the sun is back and it looks like it's here to stay for a while. So get outside and enjoy the sun, but bring plenty of water because temperatures will still be in the high 80s. Looks like we're going to have some good weather this week for the campus's upcoming sporting events. And to tell us more about these events are Joseph Dykus and Jolie Poole. Thanks, guys. And you're right. The weather sure does look great for the Mocs to take on VMI on the road this weekend. Chattanooga Mocs Volleyball is back home this weekend, and they're set to begin their 2017 SOCOM season tonight against the Western Carolina Catamounts. So come on out and support your Mocs. And on Saturday, the Mocs will take on the UNC Greensboro Spartans at the McClellan Gym. The first set starts at 6 p.m. It was another tough loss for the Mocs against UT Martin. UTC has now fallen to 0-3 on the season before, before facing VMI tomorrow night. The UTC offense continued to look lost behind Nick Tiano with only one touchdown and dismal offensive stats. 
It took the Mocs three quarters before they scored their lone offensive touchdown of the game. The Mocs only crossed the 50-yard line once in the first half. EGC opens up Southern Conference play to Nara Knight on the road. You can catch the game live on ESPN3. UTC bid farewell to an icon. James Bucky Wolford passed away after an extended battle with an undisclosed illness. Bucky was an All-American football player for the Mocs and later found success in the retail development industry with CBL and Associates. He formed his own company, which now owns and operates retail centers in four states. He was inducted into the UTC Entrepreneurship Hall of Fame. Wolford also served on the board of UT trustees and was the chairman of the UC Foundation. Bucky will be missed, but forever a mock. There's always tons of stuff going on in the scenic city. Here's a few things we think you should check out this weekend. The annual Hamilton County Fair will be held this Saturday and Sunday at Chester Frost Park in Hickson. The fair features local craftsmen, live music, and tons of food. Want to take some time this weekend to stretch out and enjoy some art? The Harnam Museum is hosting Room to Revitalize, which is artful yoga, and it starts this Saturday, September 23rd at 1.30 p.m. Or maybe you feel like relaxing and keeping it low-key. Kingsman, The Golden Circle, and the Lego Ninjago movie come into theaters this weekend, but it still reigns supreme in the box office if you're looking for a scare. And on Sunday, wrap up your weekend with a trip to Chattanooga Market. This weekend is a Scenic City Wings competition. Come taste some wings from six of Chattanooga's most amazing restaurants. The cost is $10 to enjoy some wings, and proceeds go to the Chattanooga Area Food Bank. And that does it for this week's edition of Chattanooga. And for this edition of Mox News, thank you for joining us. Check out our videos uploaded throughout the week to YouTube, and don't forget to subscribe. We air on the UTC TV channel and housing channel 2.1, so tune in and have a great weekend from all of us here at Mox News.